I hope everybody knows this. I request the congregation to stand and exalt the name of the Lord. Though we are few in number, we need to praise His name tonight. Sing, sing hallelujah to the Lord. you and me. Scripture portion is taken from the book of Judges, chapter 6, verses beginning from 11 to 17. And there came an angel of the Lord, and sat under an oak which was in Ophrah, that pertained unto Josh the Abyssalite, and his son Gideon, threshed wheat by the winepress, to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him, and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord with, be with us, why then is all this befallen us, and where be all his miracles which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us, and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him, and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? And he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. And he said unto him, 
If now I have found grace in thy sight, then show me as a sign that thou talkest with thee. May God bless this reading. And to meditate on your holy word, thank thee, Father, for taking care of us all through the past week, healing our sicknesses, meeting our day to day needs, and also guarding our trials and temptations. We pray for the world of the Father, as it is commanded unto us to proclaim the gospel of Jesus unto the ends of the world. I submit all the missionaries, evangelists, the churches and pastors and the lay leaders who are taking the responsibility of spreading the gospel. Be with them and guide them and protect them from all dangers and enemies and provide them the needs. I pray for the victims in the Nepal issue. There are so many people lost their beloved ones and many lost their belongings and homes. Father, comfort them and console them and help them to restore their lives and the situation in that country. I also pray for the students who are preparing themselves for MSIT examination and also some of the young people preparing themselves for DSC and bank examinations. Yes, Father, they are looking forward for their knowledge to receive the future that is set for them. Give them the needed knowledge, help them to prepare well so that they can write the examinations accordingly. I pray for the Gideon's ministry, Father, as this Sunday is allotted for the Gideon's International Ministries. As Father, we know the Holy Scriptures are distributed variously in different countries and different parts of the world, in different languages with the free will offerings of the believers who has a mind to support. I submit all the office bearers of the Gideon's ministries and all the Gideonites and all the people who are supporting them. Be with them and bless them. As this Sunday is being allotted for the Gideon's, I submit the speaker of the day Mr. Y.T. Mitragar and also Mr. S. Sarat who is going to give us the report of the Gideons. Use them as your instruments. Help the congregation to support the basic responsibility of the Gideon's ministry. Submitting myself, the congregation and the people who are involved in the Gideon's international ministries. Aren't you okay? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good evening. Today's anthem is taken under the caption, Mine eyes have seen the glory. The lyrics goes like this. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He hath loosed the fateful lightning of his terribles of sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Our God is marching on.
said I thank God and praise God for the wonderful opportunity he has rendered to stand here in this beautiful chapel and to speak to you I also thank our chaplain the Reverend G Peter Garu and the members of the English Service Committee for the permission given to the Gideons International in India I am Sharath member of the Gideon's International Indian Ellur Camp and I am here to present before you the aims and objectives of the Gideon Ministry and also the how this organization is functioning speaking for the first time so please bear with me there is a man by name Bhagwan Sahai in Alwar, Rajasthan from a very poor family. His father was a, a daily laborer. This person, Bhagwan Sahai, was in school. In the school, some people came and distributed some small books. In his own words, some small books like this. He went home with the book. He simply threw it out not realizing its importance, not realizing it was the New Testament. And uh, in due course, after the death of his father, the responsibility fell on him to take care of the family. He became a dropout. And then, unfortunately, he had to become a rickshaw puller. He became a rickshaw puller, and whatever little amount of money he was earning, he was simply spending gambling. He became a gambler. Then he switched over to drinking and there was no money at all to take care of the family and finally he became a thief. He started stealing money, caught by police many times, imprisoned, beaten and shunned by the society. One day in 1996 his eyes fell on that small book he threw once upon a time, he took that book and it written in golden words, Naya Niyam in Hindi, meaning the New Testament. He started reading about Yeshu Mashi, Jesus Christ, the wonderful healing touch and how Jesus performed so many miracles and how he raised the dead. But in spite of this reading, his life did not change much. In 1997, his mother died and he was possessed by an evil spirit. He came under the influence of a demon. Under this condition, he decided to commit suicide. He was walking to the nearby railway station to throw himself in front of the running train. But at that time, at that time he saw some people standing in the nearby college distributing the same small books. Instead of going to the railway track, he was attracted to go to that college. He went there, requested that Naya Niyam. He took that and started reading. And he requested the same people. He called them the dignified people to take him to some satsang. So those people took him to the Bethel Fellowship Church in Alwar, Rajasthan, where he sat and started to read the New Testament regularly. And miraculously, the evil spirit left him. He accepted Christ as his personal savior. He took baptism, joined the Bible College, 
and in 2000 he graduated, became a pastor and uh, he planted four churches. The man who was prepared to die, who was prepared to commit suicide, became a pastor and planted four churches and baptized hundreds of people. How this is possible? Somebody distributed this scripture and somebody like you people paid for it. And all glory to God for this particular person, Bhagavan Sahai. The basic objective of the Gideon ministry is to win souls to God, especially young men and women. The method is distributing the word of God. Isaiah 55, 11 says, So shall my word be that goeth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing where to I sent it. And this particular verse has been fulfilled in the life of Bhagavan Sahai. And what's the relationship between the Gideons and the church? We consider the Gideons as the extended arm of the church. The church pastors are extremely busy preparing messages, taking care of the worship programs, visiting the families, taking care of the weddings, conducting funeral services, and also memory services. The pastors are very, very busy. And the committee members and the deacons are very busy in administrative work. It is we, the Gideons, who stand by the roadside, who go to the schools and colleges, visit hospitals, prisons, host the hotels, and distribute the word of God. And what can the church do? The church responsibility towards, I don't call it responsibility, but the church can help us in three ways. Number one, pray for the Gideon ministry, we need it. Nowadays, we all, we all know, we see in the newspapers how the Christians are being attacked by certain political parties, certain organizations, and certain youth organizations. You know about whom I'm talking. I don't want to name them. So we very badly need your prayer, prayer so that we can carry out the, the purpose of, the responsibility of distributing the word of God. Secondly, you can join as the members and hand in hand will work together join the Gideon ministry. And thirdly, you can extend your helping hand by providing financial assistance. Each New Testament costs 35 rupees for printing. So you can extend your helping hand. And Gideon ministry is now being carried out, very actively working in 200 countries. We are very close to the United Nations organizations, 200 nations. In India, the New Testament is being printed in 19 languages. Recently, the 19th language has been added, the language being spoken in the Northeast Hill States. In the low town so far, we have distributed 52,000 scriptures. We are standing here near the Dauli, near the ABM compound, near the Ramaya Badi, and many other places, and we are distributing. All over the world, every second, two scriptures are being distributed. And so far, the, all over the world, 199 crores of scriptures have been distributed. We are waiting for the day when the 200 crore Bible will be distributed. We need your helping hand. And I hope you will help us. And uh, after the service is over, we'll stand outside with the open Bibles and uh, kindly help the Gideon ministry. And God will bless us. Hand in hand, we'll work together. Once again, I'll thank on Pastor Garu and the committee for the wonderful opportunity that has been given. Thank you so much. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, 
I greet you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am indeed thankful to God for giving me this uh, blessed opportunity to share His word, especially on this day as we observe it as Gideon's Sunday. I am also thankful to our beloved chaplain, Reverend G. Peter Garu, and also our beloved associate chaplain, Reverend K. B. J. Kumar Garu, and the members of the English Service Committee and every family member of this Downey Hall. Dear friends, we have already heard the scripture portion read to us that is for our meditation. From the sixth chapter of Judges, I would like to read two verses, that is the twelfth verse and also the seventeenth verse. The twelfth verse reads thus, The angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon and said, The Lord is with you mighty man of valor. The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. And the second verse, that is the seventeenth verse, reads thus. Gideon says, if I have found grace in thy sight, then show me a sign that thou art talking to me. If I have found grace in thy sight, give me a sign that you are the one who has been sent by God and uh, talking to me. Let us have a word of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank the Lord for this blessed time of fellowship. We thank Thee for all of us have come together to worship Thee and hear Thy word. As we meditate upon Thy word that Thou hast given to us, Help us to understand and be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dear friends, I would like to share with you tonight the life and work and the ministry of Gideon. which is suitable, I believe, to the occasion, apt for the occasion. Gideon, you know, was one of uh, the prominent characters we find in the Old Testament. And uh, his story, you can read in the 6th, 7th and 8th chapters, I encourage the children, especially youngsters, to go back to your home. If possible, read tonight. This is sixth chapter, seventh chapter, and eighth chapters of the book of Judges. It's quite interesting for you to know the history of this uh, great servant of God. And we have already seen in the verse 
12 the lord is with thee the angel says to gideon the lord is with thee you mighty man of valor and to that gideon responds and speaks if I have found grace in thy sight, show me a sign that you are talking to me. Wonderful words. A promise. And the reply to the angel. In order to know the real contextual meaning of these two verses we have to go back and read first a few verses found in sixth chapter of the judges the sixth chapter first verse itself begins like this again the israelites did the evil in the eyes of the lord and for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midianites. How awful to hear this statement. The Israelites, none other than the children of God who experienced so much of love from their living father, who experienced several miracles of their living father in their lives, they had gone astray. They left the real God. And uh, they began to worship the idols of the Midianites and the Amalekites. How, how awful to hear that the children of a God gone astray and worshipping other wives idols. Therefore, when the Israelites left the God, perhaps a God painfully left his children Israelites also. If you leave God and the God with all his concern and pain leaves you so we have to be careful not to leave our God lest we should be left alone. Dear friends, here the Israelites suffered untold misery. Those Midianites were innumerable like grains of sand of the seashore. They intruded into their camp, Israelites land, and stole away all the foodstuffs. They didn't have nothing to eat. And they stole away their cattle and the livestock. Nothing was there to eat. How awful it is. They were suffering from hunger and even the children didn't have milk. Such was their suffering. And you know our God is always loving. For seven years they suffered like that. And uh, during these seven years having been suffered like that year to year, ultimately they remembered their God, loving Father who did so much for them in the past years. Our Lord is there. He would again take care of us, provided we come to His feet and uh, ask His excuse and pardon. Though, then they cried unto the Lord, Lord, excuse us, pardon us. We have gone astray. Please help. Release us from these shackles of these Midianites. And our God is always kind as I have said. 
and you know what he did yes he wanted to save them and immediately he sent a prophet and the prophet admonishes these is the lies here friends we have a lesson i believe when we are blessed in our affluent days in our abundance people are prone to forget their living father who helped them to possess such things but we have to be careful when we are blessed by god with abundance and with all kinds of blessings it is our duty we have to remember to live closer to him so that we are much more blessed and lifted up to do his service in this world that's the purpose of god's blessing over us we have to realize that so god continued his plan plan to relieve the israelites from this shackles of the midianites you know he sent an angel an angel of the lord came down and sat under an oak tree and ofra that land is called that land belongs to the gideons of father and this angel could see gideon you know what gideon was doing he was hiding himself in a wine press lest he should be seen and killed by the midianites he was so careful to hide himself and other fellows they went to they went to the mountains and hideouts and they were there hiding themselves and this angel called gideon he could come near to gideon and said he didn't uh, uh, talk anything else no pleasantries and he began to tell what he wanted to tell he tells god is with you you mighty man of valor what is this i am a timid man afraid of the enemies and hiding myself here secretly in a wine press but this angel calls me a mighty man of valor how is it be possible no no no, no. i cannot be called like that but he confirms you are the mighty man of power god is going to use you and gideon comes with us these words gideon replied if the lord is with us why has all this happened to us where are all the wonders that our fathers told us about and they said did not the lord bring us out of egypt but now the lord has abandoned us and put us into the land of midian and the lord turned to him and said go in in strength and you have and save israel out of midian and you will be you will be thrashing the midianites just as you could kill even one person how is it possible then angel of the i am with you the lord god with thee most powerful omnipotent god i am with you and he believes but he wants to question this uh, angel what you say is true please please tell me you say that i have found grace in the sight of uh, god but i want to know if i have found grace in thy sight 
then then show me a sign gideon was a simple man an ordinary man he didn't he didn't uh, uh, keep quiet without asking this question you are saying that uh, i am going to be given such a grace to kill all those uh, just as i could kill only one man if i have found grace in thy sight then show me a sign that you talkest to me he is from god so dear friends these are the the context and textual information about these two verses so here we see friends that the gideon so privilege we see he was he was a, a tree feller an ordinary man comes from a lowest clan but this person had the privilege of uh, having the grace of god how wonderful it is an ordinary man having the grace of god how wonderful it is and grace means unmerited favor from god unmerited <laughs> you don't deserve you don't have any merit to possess the grace of god but god has found something precious in you nobody knows so what that precious thing in you go only god knows sometimes we feel why this fellow is given so much of grace he doesn't deserve you say but god knows he deserves he is the person that could be given my grace and gideon had this wonderful privilege of possessing his grace dear friends to be in his presence is very common to be in god's presence is very very common to all of us no one in the world can go away from his presence nobody christian or non christian or any human being cannot go away from the presence of god that's why the psalmist david tells in psalm number 139 7 8 where can i flee my lord where can where can i hide myself where can i flee no if i go beyond the clouds you are there if i go deep down into the seas you are there i cannot escape but but finding grace is very very peculiar to his children only not to all finding grace of god is to his children only you please have to note down this point god sees something he has been observing your life so long how you are in the family what kind of obedience you are showing to your parents what kind of uh, sincerity you are showing towards your studies what personal life you are uh, leading even parents they don't know what is your personal life and how you are in the presence of god are you hearing the word of god or physically here and elsewhere your thoughts are flying away but god knows and when he knows that particular child whom god has been observing he puts his grace on that particular child he puts his grace so many scores of examples i could give but 
time is short time is short but how about to david the youngest he was a shepherd boy in the field god put his grace on him he raised him to be the king how about moses daniel shadrach meshach abednego if we come to the modern age how about uh, how about uh, the hymn writer fanny crosby even in the early months of life she became completely blind both eyes and as she was raising as she was growing up and up as the parents were taking god could see something precious in her life and therefore god gave her his grace what happened that a lady who was given the grace of a poesy writing hymns he wrote more than 8000 hymns no hymn book is without her hymns god gave her his grace and uh, i would like to tell tell something about john milton you know a great poet while he had eyes he wrote several several pamphlets and uh, political books they had gone into oblivion but when he came to the utter helpless state experiencing the blindness both eyes were gone god gave him his grace he has been observing his life you know what he did he gave him his grace and lifted him up and the poetic talent in him came up and he wrote historical epics that can forever as long as this world lives great biblical epics what are they paradise lost and paradise regained so friends i have to cut short we are also privileged if we live such lives that are acceptable to our god god finds something in us and he gives us grace and he can lift us up and he can use us in his service dear friends and such a big grace a magnitude the magnitude of a grace cannot be even imagined and such a grace was given to gideon he could not even understand how can it be so as a plain man as a man from the village living in a remote corner he stood up and asked the angel he could have the boldness you angel of the lord how is it possible for me i am i am a timid boy a timid person hiding myself i am only a tree feller wood cutter i come from the least clan and how could it be how could you use me to kill all the midianites as if i could kill only one man how is it possible so dear children dear friends if you have such doubts if god gives you his grace to you enormous grace and lifts you up if you entertain doubts 
our kind lord a loving lord is uh, ready to answer answer and what is that what is that you want to do me in order to in order to confirm this grace is on you is only confirmed on you what is that you want me to do you please uh, read the bible at home you find uh, two <laughs> two signs two proofs one is uh, a lamp was cut the broth was poured on that and gideon asks the angel i have kept this basket of meat here on this you please you please without a using fire burn it and the angel of the lord touches with the tip of uh, the stick staff and birds dear friends having been confirmed having been confirmed by god that's a real angel spoke to him in. he got a new strength a new power a new energy just as thomas doubtful thomas doubting thomas put his hand into the woods of jesus christ and felt that jesus was the real then you know he cried out with two wonderful words my lord my god my lord in the same way gideon completely surrendered he completely surrenders himself to the lord what is that you want me to do in order to you know destroy those uh, swarms of fools midianites and immediately he received new strength and he blew his trumpet so many people came from all the all the clan of uh, gideon so many people gathered and your know, god said no not so many people i am going to use send away those people who are afraid of fighting with the midianites you know uh, read the bible 22000 people had gone away to their homes because they were timid people they never wanted to fight in the battle and again the lord says 10000 were there the lord says even 10000 i am not going to use at what's that you want me to do lord take them to the stream those people who lap the water just like dogs you keep them away those that drink the water they fold their hands separate <laughs> god wanted to use those persons who leapt water just like dogs and he he went war along with 300 people and you know the weapons the weapons they used to fight and destroy these uh, millions and millions of uh, midianites were one earthen jars two trumpet and uh, the third one is uh, touches these are the weapons they are going to fight with this you know the story what happened in the midnight they were on the mountain top underneath the plain millions and millions of uh, these immediates were at one time gideon asked them he asked them to stand where you are required to stand and gideon began to blow the trumpet they had broken the vessels when the lights were raised up those millions of midnights who had just tried killing themselves within themselves there was utter chaos so friends that's how a tree fell a humble man became so obedient to god's word and uh, achieved a victory in a st- 
astounding victory killing millions and millions of uh, the medianites so dear friends why we have named our organization that is the gideons organization as gideons our brother has said i think three youngsters in the beginning they sat together and they wanted to found the organization and a question came to their mind what name with what name our organization should be christened after so much of prayer one of the three will the rights i believe he stood up and said gideon why among the gideons among the gideons who are in the organization the organizers wants to wants to implement these things gideon should be obedient they should be humble they should be faithful and they should do whatever god says they should not question after clearing the doubts the sigidian never questioned god's power why lord you are sending us with uh, these weapons uh, jars what's the use of jars uh, lives never questioned simply obeyed in the same way we in the organization have to simply obey and do god's will in winning the souls by method of distributing the word of god and also proclaiming the gospel witness personal by personal witness may god bless this uh, message and i thank our pastor once again chaplain once again for giving me this opportunity god bless you thank you please pray for this wonderful ministry that is being done in 200 countries each second two bibles are distributed throughout this world be the partners of this great ministry god bless you a willing worker is used mightily in the hands of god it is said that the enemy war they came up with their cattle and their tents and they came as grasshoppers for multitude for both they and their camels were without number and they entered into the land to destroy it but god chose 300 people and routed the enemy so the ministry is based on the promise of the lord isaiah 55 10 and 11 which reads like this for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thida but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish for that which is sent i please and it shall prosper for it for in the thing where to i sent it god blesses his ministry so i thank brother mitra and brother sharad steven for enlightening us and edifying us with the word of the lord so in the closing